Stoffaker Solomon in San Francisco in my house in front of my, what's my studio? It's a corner of a room that in a, in a six, 600 square foot house, this corner of this room is my office. And up there where I have stuff pinned on the wall, that's sort of the interior of my mind. I've been drawing since I was a little kid. And uh, when I was in high school, I um, made drawings, I did charcoal drawings, and they were just good for no reason. The Art Institute in San Francisco, which used to be called the California School of Fine Arts, the head of the school offered me a scholarship, a working scholarship. So I would go there at night and take the role, and they put me in all the classes. Probably would have been an artist, but my first husband died and I had to make money, and so then I went to Switzerland because I was told through by friends that the best schools were in Switzerland. I went first to Zurich where the uh, director of the school took one look at me and said, you're just an American. Come back in a year, learn German, come back in a year. You're not a serious person. And so I, but I had Armin Hoffman's phone number and I phoned him and told him this and he said, just get on the plane, train tomorrow morning. And he and his wife met me at the station. I had my three-year-old daughter with me and they had brought chocolates for her and they, she found me in an the apartment. They got, Armin took me to see the director of the school, told him I could speak German, I kept my mouth shut, and I got in. in it, it, well, in San Francisco, that was the hippie days. Everything was wiggles and squiggles and hippie art. But you know, I, when I came back, I was just the opposite, totally the opposite, with a vengeance. They, they thought I was, well, Larry Halpern, who loved me, called it Nazi graphics, and he was being kind. The hippies just thought it was cold and horrible, and I thought all their wiggles were ridiculous. I had just come back from uh, studying graphic design in Switzerland, and um, it was my first job, really. I opened a studio, and it, Larry Halpern had been a friend of my first husband's and uh, Frank Stoffaker, and uh, he gave me a corner room in his big warehouse down in uh, San Francisco along the Embarcadero. His new job was a sea ranch and so they decided to hire me with Bobby and in those days I was about 32 and a bleach blonde and it was just great. I mean that, that was my first job. Oceanic Properties um, who, it was their money, Hawaiian money. They bought 10 miles of the Pacific coast that really nothing was on it except about a dozen hedgerows of eucalyptus. And there's a small town, Gualala, at the north and nothing much at the south. About a few miles further down, there was a little hotel. We drove up there and walked around and loved the place. And, it started with the, I, I had to make a, just plain old stationery. In those days, you had to hire a graphic designer to make stationery and a logo. You couldn't just find one, hash one together on the internet. You had to hire somebody. And so they, uh, Al, Larry Halpern introduced me to the client, Al Boki, who was an architect who kind of understood what I was doing. And um, I designed uh, first, Oceanic Properties logo, with the logo for them, O, P, P, and um, and then I had to, had to design a logo and stationery for the Sea Ranch. The marvelous client, I will all admit, I mean, one reason everybody sort of did their best work up there is we had a very good client, very sympathetic. He, as I said, he had been an architect. He, quit being an architect because he wanted to be the client, because he wanted to run the show and have more power. One thing grew out of another. I mean, at first you had to have stationery, and, and then you had to have brochures to sell the place. And take, I had to find photographers to uh, photograph it. The first photographer I got did it in black and white, and it looked like the, 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 the moon on a bad day. It was just, Frightening. It, it looked like um, like the, the really rugged, natural scenery that it kind of was. Whereas then I got Ernie Braun, who was a photographer for the Sierra Club, and he came back and shot it at dawn with great lenses, and he made it look like paradise. 
And then one thing led to another. I did not do the super graphics until the, it was absolutely the last thing I did. It was years later. I think we started the project in about 1964 and it's, uh, super graphics was done in 1968. And it was done because Charles, Bill, Charles Moore and Bill Turnbull had built the first swim and tennis club and it was all natural wood outside and natural wood inside and it caught, went way over budget and they couldn't afford anything in the way of, they didn't know what to do with it. It looked sort of uncomfortable. And so the, Al said to me, you want to paint it up? Paint it up. So we painted the insides white and then I came with two painters up there one weekend and just painted it up. I really did. I, I had, the, the architecture was so complicated. It, all those uh, shed roofs and raging diagonals that I couldn't figure it out from the plans and elevations. I figured out one wall where I had the big breaking piece of surf of outside was the big breaking piece of surf. And then I just went on from one wall to the other. I mean, I, I had studied to be an artist, you know, in, at the Institute and I did, that, that part of my training just kicked in. When I did it, it got, came out in Life magazine, so everybody copied it. We had a very good public relations woman who happened to be my best friend. And I got her the job, so she got me publicity. And it was everywhere. I mean, I remember driving through some village in France once, and there was super, not super graphics, but Sea Ranch housing, exactly like Sea Ranch, in the middle of this kind of valley in beautiful France had nothing to do with the sea, the hedge roof, the, the slatted roofs, had nothing to do with the wind from the northwest. It just became very stylish to look like the Sea Ranch for a period there in the 60s. And, and everyone copied super graphics because it was easy to do. I remember walking down Fifth Avenue with the um, head of the architecture department at Yale and there were these huge signs saying sail and, and in, in big, big letters. And he just looked at me and said, see, it's all your fault. 